electricity bill, gas bill. All that's missing is the rates demand. <laughs> Why don't I keep my big mouth shut? <laughs> Thank you, postman Pat. I hope your cat dies. <laughs> God dear. Who makes up these bills? The Sheriff of Nottingham? God. I don't suppose I can have the car this morning. Oh, no. Does that mean I can't? Oh, no, no, no. No, it doesn't, or no, it does? Does what? Can I borrow the car to go shopping? Shopping? That means spending money, doesn't it? Well, yes, of course. Anything you want to add to the list? No, but we can do without that. What? And that, and that as well. Terry? And that, and that. And that never worked for me, I don't know about you. <laughs> that's that, that's that. And that. Here we go. That leaves bread, potatoes and butter. A butter? Ah, oh, I nearly missed that. Ah. <laughs> Margarine. Bread, potatoes and margarine. There's only the two of us now, darling. Well, it's hardly worth taking the car to the shops just for three items. Good, that saves money on petrol then as well. <laughs> oh, Terry, why are you being so stingy? Stingy? I'm not being stingy. Love. We've got to find the money for these bills from somewhere. You stay there, save your footwear. Oh. Hello, good morning, Stony Brook Manor. Baron Hard up speaking. <laughs> Must have got the wrong number. I wanted to speak to Terry Medford. I'm his Auntie Madge. Oh, it's all right, Auntie Madge. I'm here. Uh, it's Terry speaking. It's Auntie Madge. Oh, wonderful news, Terry. I, I can't believe it myself. They've just informed me. Your Uncle Charlie died three years ago. I were with him when he went, remember? Now don't interrupt, Bernie. Well, I were. Uh, just a minute, Terry. What does she want? Wonderful news. Uncle Charlie died three years ago. <laughs> About it. Well, I doubt it. I mean, she was the one who invited us to the funeral. Are you still there, Teddy? Yes, Auntie Madge. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Uncle Charlie died three years ago. No, no. You, you mean he didn't? Did not. Die? Well, of course he died. At least I hope he did. Because we had him cremated. <laughs> I were his best friend, remember? I'm not quite following this, Auntie Madge. Oh, just shut up, you! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <coughs> you have a word with her. She's off her rocker. I'm going to have to sit down, Eric. You, well, shall I get a chair? <laughs> Let's have three cheers. Oh. Hi, hi. <laughs> hip, hip. <laughs> oh, shut up, get a chair. Are you still there? Yes, Auntie Madge. Oh, I'm going to have to rest up my legs with all this excitement. Uh, yes, but what excitement? I'm getting that letter this morning. What letter? The premium bond draw for this month, Terry. Uh, no, no, it's June. June? Oh, no, no, but well, definitely this month. Says so. <laughs> <laughs> Not the month, the name. Name? Lot. Well, well, it says here, Charles Medford, 71 Dunstable Terrace. No, Auntie Madge, my name. Oh, well, it wouldn't have your name, because it weren't addressed to you. <laughs> I've got the chairs, Auntie Madge. Oh, well, anyway, it says that Uncle Charlie's premium bond has won top prize. And seeing as how he left it to you, congratulations. What? Uncle Charlie's premium bond's come up. Remember and tell him I were his best friend. You told him that already. He did leave the premium bond to you, didn't he? Well, I'm not sure. Hang on a minute. Terry, did Uncle Charlie leave us anything when he died? He certainly did. What? We had the job of scattering his ashes in Piccadilly Circus, remember? No, no, I meant in his will. Oh, he left us one or two things that made him a sentimental nature. Like what? Well, there was his elephant's foot umbrella stand, that his um, mm. complete collection of beer mats, and last but not least, his Sunday best set of ulcers. Mm. But uh, no premium bond? Ah, oh, just the one. Well, there'll be no chance of that coming up. You know we never win anything. Well, there's a first time for everything. Uh, how much have we won, Auntie Madge? Well, I keep telling you, the top prize. £250,000. Let me get over it. Now, it's only fair to share the good fortune with the rest of the family. And with Charlie's best friend. Would you mind repeating that? I said it's only fair <laughs> to share the good... No, 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 the amount we've won. 250000 
Now, he could have given that premium bond to any one of us, so I'm sure you'll agree he's only fair to go... Shares! Hello? Hello? Well? No, Terry, I don't feel at all well. No, I meant how much have we won? We've won uh, two... two... Well, two quid. I told you we never win anything. No, no, it's... it's... it's two hundred. Two hundred quid? Well, that's more like it. It's not two hundred, Terry. It's two hundred and fifty. Oh, well, even better. That'll take care. Of, <laughs> that'll take care of the gas bill and the electricity bill. No, Terry. What oh, the gas and the phone bill? I don't care which we settle first. <laughs> we haven't won two hundred and fifty pounds. And why did you say we had? I mean, you got me all excited there. We won two hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> how? How two hundred and fifty? Thousand pounds. <laughs> I'm very sorry, I can't talk now. We're suddenly very rich. <laughs> you, you're, you're not making this up, are you? Auntie Madge got the letter this morning. That's why she was phoning. Oh, thank you, Uncle Charlie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I swear when I get the money, I'll have your teeth cast in bronze. <laughs> Provided we can find them. What? Well, we gave away the beer mats and that awful elephant's foot umbrella stand. You didn't give that away, did you? Terry, it was disgusting. But, I mean, Uncle Charlie always said he shot that himself. When did Uncle Charlie ever shoot an elephant? Not the whole elephant, just the foot. <laughs> Anyway, we gave it away to the church jumble sale, and I don't know what happened to the teeth. Oh, I must have thrown them out. But, I mean, you, you wouldn't have thrown away the premium bomb, would you? Oh, not unless it was clenched in the teeth. Mm. I know, we must have put that with our other premium bonds. Where's that? In the filing case down beside the desk. Oh, well, come on, then. Don't stay there. Mm. Yeah. What if we can't find <laughs> it? Oh, no problem. <laughs> I'll just shoot myself. <laughs> Give us the prize, even if we can't produce the premium bond. Well, I don't know. Oh, well, no. it's only money. Only oh. money? It's only £250,000 of the money, that's all. I mean, it could make the whole difference to our lives. Yes, we could pay off the mortgage, mm -hmm. and we could take a trip round the world, and then we could buy a nice little cottage by the sea somewhere. <sighs> In fact, we could do almost anything we want. There's only one thing I want. And what's that? Get this flipping filing case open. <laughs> It's not locked, is it? Well, why am I banging it with my fist if it's not locked? Well, I don't have a key. Oh, Clarky, where's the poker? Oh, that won't do any good. Oh. I'll get you a paper clip. A paper clip? What use is a paper clip? To pick the lock. You, I, I'm not Harry Houdini, June. <laughs> this may not be very efficient, but by golly, it ain't half satisfied. <clears throat> ah, that's more like it. Ah. Now, what am I looking for? A large brown envelope with premium bonds written on uh... it. Large brown envelope. <laughs> when you say large, how large? About this large. Ah. Premium bonds. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It wasn't in a filing case after all. Don't worry, darling. At this moment, you can do no wrong. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Premium bonds. Here we are. <laughs> oh, come on. I know, I don't. I can't. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. 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 And, and here it is. Yeah? Yeah, it's here, the one Uncle Charlie gave us. Look, June. Feel it. Smell it. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> £250,000. Do you really think we've won? Well, of course we won. I mean, Auntie Madge said so. Yes, but she's getting on a bit. I mean, she might be wrong. Wrong? Well, you said yourself we never win anything. Why don't I check with the post office and phone you at work? Oh, no, take with work. I'm coming with you. Yeah, you take that bond, and I'll shove the rest of these bonds back in the envelope. Ah. Uh, ah. What? I have found Uncle Charlie's forces. <laughs> now, now, remember, we must be very discreet. If people around here find out we've won... We're flooded with begging letters and hard luck stories, so we'll just zoom in, check the winning number, and zoom out again. All right? Right. Come on then. 
think it's going to be an awfully slow Zoom. <laughs> Excuse me, is there a go slow on? In this post office, there's never anything else. Oh, oh hello, June. Terry. <laughs> ah, pension day for you too, eh? <laughs> senior citizens yet, Miss Dunwoody? No, but the time we get served, we probably will be. <laughs> Dear, what a queue. Yes, there's only one person serving. Mm -hmm. uh, shall I see if I can do anything? Uh, no, no, don't bother, Miss Dunwoody. It can't do any harm to give them a little encouragement. <laughs> Shan't be a tick. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. If we don't get some service too sweet, we'll report the lot of you to Esther Ransom! <laughs> well, well done, Miss Dunwoody. <laughs> well, I, I, I usually find them wonderfully obliging. <laughs> if you scream like that, Adam, I'm not surprised. Uh, uh, actually, I'm... I'm very glad to find you together like this. You see, my midweek luncheon club are holding a surprise draw, but <laughs> I haven't had very much luck selling tickets. Now, I know you say you never win anything, Terry, but your, your luck is bound to change. <laughs> I think it already has, Miss Dunwoody. <laughs> We'd be more than happy to buy a few. Oh. A few? We'll buy the lot. Oh, but I've got seven books left and... They're rather expensive. How much? Well, I'm afraid... I'm afraid they're 5p a ticket. 5p? It is rather steep, isn't it? And there are ten tickets to a book. Oh, that's 50p a book. Is it? Oh, dear. How very extortionate. Mm, seven books, you say? Well, well, here's five pounds and keep the one pound fifty for your club funds. Oh, that's, that's far too generous. Too generous, Miss Dunwoody. We may have just won two. Terry! We may uh, have just wanted to help your... <laughs> help your club with a spot of extra cash. <laughs> oh, thank you. I... I'll put your names on the surprise draw tickets right away. Oh, that's not necessary. Oh, but it is. Suppose you win one of our marvellous prizes. Uh, what are they? Uh, no one's quite sure. <laughs> that's why it's a surprise. Uh. That was good of you to buy all her tickets. Well, it's the least we could do. She got this queue moving faster than a dose of salts. <laughs> now, remember, we have to be very discreet. Yes. Morning. Morning. Premium box. Sorry? Premium box. You'll have to speak a bit louder. Yes, I don't think you need to be quite so discreet, Terry. Even I can't hear you. Mm. Um, could you please check this premium bond against the winning numbers? But there's over a thousand down here. There's only one number you have to check it against, and that is the one at the top of the list. You mean the 250... <laughs> Well? You mean? You've won this month's top prize. 250,000. Everything all right, sir? Ah, uh, are, you, are you the manager? I'm the manager, but I'm sure I can cope with any queries. It, I, I want you to double check. Yes, it would be terrible if it was all a mistake. <laughs> what was? Is the number of our premium bond the same number as this month's top prize winner? You mean the 250,000? <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'll check. Would you please? Well? Is it? Have we? No doubt about it. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> please keep your voice down. Yes, we don't want any publicity. That's right. We, we don't want anybody else to know about it. All right? All right, sir. It'll just be between you, me, Darren, and them. Them? <laughs> Oh, then. <laughs> Terry, aren't you in yet? Terry, where are you, you idiot? Hello? Uh, Miss Fennell, no, no, there's no sign of him, but when or if he appears, I shall tear him off a strip and then Sir Dennis is welcome to make mincemeat of what's left of him. 
Fine. Morning, Malcolm. Hello, Terry. Uh, Terry! <laughs> Where the hell have you been? Ah, hold that for me, will you? What? Ah, there's nothing like a good cigar. Do you care for smoke yourself? I don't need a cigar to smoke. I'm so flaming mad, I'm surprised the sprinklers haven't gone off. Oh, you reached boiling point, have you? I certainly have. Well, I have some champagne to cool you down. I'm not going to take a bribe of sh cheap champagne and a, and a cigar. Are you sure you won't smoke one? You can show me how to, how to blow a smoke ring. I've never managed to do that, you know. Mm. I told Sir Dennis you'd be at that meeting at 11 o'clock this morning. I was made to look a complete fool. Were you? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry I missed it now. <laughs> what? Cheer <laughs> up. Oh, Mr. Meshwood, the men at the gate saw you arrive and have informed Sir Dennis. If he finds you in the mood he's in, he'll sack you on the spot. But if you leave now, I may be able to calm him down. Oh, what a sweet person you are, Miss Fennell. What? Well, you saved my bacon more times than I can remember. I've, I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> mm. oh, <Mr. laughs> I knew he was off his chump. Have some champagne. Oh, but, but Sir Dennis is coming. Oh, don't bother. There's plenty left for him. I, I don't know what to do. Oh, it's quite simple. You put it to your lips and tilt it. <laughs> Sir Dennis. Sid Ford! <laughs> Hodge! Are you all right, then? <laughs> what is the meaning of this? The meaning of what? You! Me? Yes. What, are you, what is the meaning of any of us? What? Do we indeed have a meaning? What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about the fundamental questions that, that should occupy us all. I mean, is there life after death? Have we been visited by beans from outer space? <laughs> How long can Wimbledon stay in the first division? Have you been drinking, Medford? Not all. <laughs> <laughs> you can join me. Why weren't you at that meeting? Our rivals are planning a takeover bid, and I want every one of my employees' trust and support. I'm sorry, Dad. I don't wear either of them. <laughs> What the hell's going on? Oh, don't start bullying, Malcolm. But bullying? Did you say bullying? I'm sorry, Sid. I didn't know you had trouble with your hearing. My hearing is perfect. Then, 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 for heaven's sake, you heard me the first time. <laughs> look, that just, I don't know, look, why, why don't you pull up, pull up a chair and lie down? <laughs> I, I. You, you look like a goldfish. <laughs> a goldfish! Um, may I get you some water? No, there we go. Give me some champagne and, and have a cigar. I have just come in to a little bit of money. When you say a little bit of money, how much is a little bit? Well, I'm sure this won't go beyond these four walls. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Wild horses, etc. Well, I haven't got the check yet, but when I do, it will be for two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Oh, wonderful! I think I will have that champagne after all. Yes, and I'll have that cigar. Mm. And then I want a word with you in private, Medford. Yeah. Or may I call you... Terry. <laughs> Only if I can call you Den. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. Uh, all right, outside, you two. Uh, yes, Sir Dennis. And take the bottle with you, Miss Fennell. Oh, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> but I will. <laughs> oh, then. Terry. <laughs> I can't do that, you know. I wish I could blow smoke rings. I... Mm. I never can. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, you said, uh, Terry. That's right, then. <clears throat> it's not really a lot of money, you know, Terry. Isn't it, Dad? No, oh, in fact, these days, it's little more than chicken feed. Oh, but we feed a hell of a lot of chickens. <laughs> now, you will have to show prudence. Oh, she, she can't. No, 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 I mean, I mean, you will have to be prudent with your money, otherwise it could easily disappear. Now! If you were to invest that money in the company, 
you would become the hero of the hour. I would? Oh, 250,000 pounds worth of extra voting stock would swing the balance against our rivals and thwart their takeover bid. It would? And think what it would mean to you. Mmm, seat on the board, an office on the sixth floor next to mine, and... Something that no other employee in this company ever has had or ever will have. What's that? The right to use my own private bathroom. <laughs> then it does exist. Ask Miss Fennel. Ooh. And does it have gold taps and a heated seat? It's all true. Well, uh, what do you say? Jerry. Well, then, it's very tempting, but you must use the money to pay off a mortgage and go on a world cruise and buy some clothes. Oh, fripperies. Your black ones, will no, <laughs> no, I mean, she must be persuaded to put the money where it will do the most good. Ah, now, why don't I drive you home in the rolls and then we can proposition her straight away? <laughs> proposition, huh? What do you say, Terry? All right, then, on one condition. And what is that? And that is you show me how to sh smoke blow rings. <laughs> like oh. that. All right, I'm coming. Congratulations! <laughs> Beatty! <laughs> Malcolm phoned from the office. Mm, Terry bought everybody champagne. So I thought, what sauce for the goose, etc. And he was the one who said we had to be discreet. Oh, I haven't told a soul. Oh. Uh, apart from Clarice here. You remember my niece, Clarice? No. <laughs> and of course, I had to tell her, because your prize money's a godsend for both of you. <laughs> what do you mean, Beatty? Let me pour out the champagne first, while Clarice spreads her designs for you. Designs? What designs? Oh, you remember I told you what a fabulous dress designer Clarice is. Well, she's trying to set up her own fashion house and all she needs is finance. Oh, is that all? I think 50,000 should do it. Do you? 50,000 isn't very much in the world of haute couture. Maybe not, Clarice, but it's a heck of a lot in the world of Terry and June Medford. These are her latest designs for a range of evening wear. Aren't they fabulous? <laughs> that that looks like a boiler suit and a pair of wellies. That's right. Uh, and is that a gas mask? A reproduction and worn purely for decoration. Oh. What, no tin hat and matching stirrup pump? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, Clarice. If that's your idea of evening wear, you must go in for some very odd evenings. Oh, excuse me. She loves them. <laughs> Oh, oh, Austin. <laughs> Congratulations on your wonderful win. Oh, you've heard about it too, have you? Oh, it's all over the parish. And believe me, it couldn't happen to two nicer people. This isn't entirely a social visit, Mrs. Medford. Yes, I had a feeling it might not be. <laughs> oh, you know our church treasurer, Ted Norbert? Hello. And you also know that we're launching a fund to raise £150,000 for a new organ and central heating system. So we thought it best to get in first with our appeal. Yes, I'm sorry, Austin, you're too late. <laughs> too late? Yes, you'll have to get in the queue behind Beatty and Clarice and her boiler suits. <laughs> Do go in and I'll get some more glasses. <laughs> Here you go, that's it. It's a madhouse. Uh... Oh, Terry, thank heavens oh. you're back. Mm. Mother's been on the phone wanting us to buy her house. Mm. Beatty wants us to invest in a dress company, and Austin wants a donation to the church fund. Oh, uh, well, that's nothing. Sir Dennis wants us to put all the money in the company, and Malcolm's been trying to flog me his car, and even Miss Fennel suggested I give it all to the Battersea Dogs Home. Battersea Dogs Home? Yeah, I told her she hadn't got a dog's chance. <laughs> but Sir, Sir Dennis is not so easily put off. Oh, Mrs. Medford, or may I call you June, sweets to the sweet. Oh, Sir Dennis, they're lovely. But not nearly as lovely as the small fortune that has come your way. And with your permission, I intend to fertilize it. <laughs> fertilize it? Yes, well, money is like a plant. If neglected, it soon disappears, but it quickly flourishes under a good dollop of horse manure. And that is where I come in. I am an expert in horse manure. 
Yes, Terry's often said uh, much the same thing. <laughs> Terry, would you take these into the kitchen while I uh, introduce Sir Dennis to the rest of the queue? The queue? Uh, this way, Sir Dennis. Oh, oh crikey. Oh, yeah. Oh, Terry. Eric, Auntie Madge. Oh, Terry, how lovely. How did you know we're coming? Well, I didn't. You hung up on us this morning, so I decided we'd better settle this face to face. Settle what? We was much right to this money as you have. What? Charlie left 20 pounds of premium bonds to be divided up four ways. It was just chance that Auntie Madge gave you the winning bonds. It's only fair to split the money with us. Now, just a minute. 250,000 pounds divided by four comes to, uh, 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 four into two goes... Uh, yeah, we've won the top prize with a shed it with you. Uh, Are you free? Four into five... No, hang on, hang on. June. No. June, June, come out of here a minute. I don't want to bring any undue pressure on you, Terry, but if you try and hug that money to yourself, I'll break every bone in your body. Eric, what are you saying? By my reckoning, 250,000 split four ways comes to 193 pounds and six pence each. You daft old goat. No wonder your darts club keeps losing money. <laughs> They want us to share the money with them. <laughs> so does everyone else. What? Our friends in there have already spent it a dozen times over. They'll not touch a penny of it, not till we've had our fair share. Come on, Auntie Madge. Oh, come on, Bernie. I was with him when he went. And you'll be joining him if you don't shut up about it. Uh. <laughs> now then, who's been spending our money? Uh. What are we going to do? Oh, share the money, I suppose. Over my dead body. I shouldn't say that to Eric. He didn't sound too particular how he gets it. Mrs. Medford? Oh, yes. You're from the post office, aren't you? That's right. Come in. Have, uh, have you bought... Have you bought the cheque? Uh, not quite. You see, we haven't had a top prize winner in our area before, so mm. I just thought I'd verify it. And we still don't have a top prize winner in our area. What do you mean? Well, the prize number was in the name of Charles Wilberforce Medford. Yeah, my Uncle Charlie, he left me, left it to me in, in his will. Yes, but because he died, the bond was only valid to the end of that calendar year. I don't understand. I'm afraid you haven't won the 250,000 after all. <laughs> it, it, it's a joke. <laughs> it's not a joke. The number shouldn't have even been in the drawer. You mean we've got nothing? Oh, it's not as bad as that. Well, thank heavens for that. How much is it? Five pounds. See, five pounds? <laughs> The original value of the bond. A fiver, one measly fiver. I'm sorry. Not as sorry as we are. <laughs> well, you've got a funny sense of humour. Well, at least we don't have to worry about who gets the money. Well, I thought I'd better let you know as soon as possible. Yes, thanks. I hope it's not too big a shock. Oh, don't worry. I've said all along we never win anything. June, June, wonderful news. You've won first prize in our luncheon drawer. What were you saying, Terry? <laughs> Come along, Cecily, and don't dawdle, Deirdre. Uh, don't tell me. I, I bet we won a jar of your cow's foot jelly. Oh, no. Something much more spectacular. Mm. I'm terribly envious. Why, what is it? Mm. This magnificent elephant's foot umbrella stand. <laughs>